We've got the uh, module two homework here, and we're starting on problem number 21. Again, there's uh, 41 in this section. So, continuing with factoring, uh, they tell you that this one's a perfect square, so they'll probably appeal to a formula, but um, remember that uh, with our method, we can just factor by grouping. So when you factor by grouping, what you want to do is you want to multiply the first number with the last number, so the 4 with the 1. And then we look for two numbers that multiply to 4, but when you add them, you get that middle number. So in this case, that's going to be negative 2 and negative 2. And then we just write the expression, but instead of minus 4x, we do minus 2x, minus 2x plus 1. And then we group the first two terms, then group the second two terms. So the greatest common factor of the first two, we can take out 2x, and we get 2x minus 1. And then we what, what's in the parentheses to match? So we need to take out a minus 1 from the second pair. And when you take out a minus 1, you will also get 2x minus 1. And then, as you guessed, they have 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. Or that can be written more succinctly as 2x minus 1 to the second power. And that's the answer that they're going to want. All right. Um, so uh, the sum of two cubes, I think this comes up uh, maybe on one or two problems in the homework, but it will not... I don't think it appears on the test. It's not really like a... This is one that just kind of appeals to a formula that maybe you wouldn't know off the top of your head, but you can check by multiplication that it works. So this is a uh, sum of cubes. So I believe the formula says if you have something that looks like a to the third power plus b to the third power, this will factor into a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared is my guess. And you can check if you weren't sure. You can always go to like question help and you'll see that that formula is exactly there as we wrote a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So basically um, in our problem we just want to recognize what a and b are. So we have y cubed plus 1000. So basically that means a is equal to y and b would just be equal to 10 because 10 to the third power would be 1,000. So if we replace a and b with those two things, that'll give us exactly the right factorization, right? So instead of a, we're going to write y. Instead of b, we're going to write 10. And then in the second group of parentheses, we have y squared minus 10 times y and then plus 10 squared, which is 100. And that's the factorization. And you can always multiply to see that that actually works, right? What will happen is you'll get your y cubed from this one, your uh, 10 cubed from 10 times 100. And then when you do, um, your other pairs of terms are going to cancel out. The y times the minus 10y will become minus 10y squared, and the 10 times the y squared will be plus 10y squared. Those will cancel. And then similarly, your y times 100 will be plus 100y, and your 10 times your minus 10y will be minus 100y. So those will cancel as well. So you can always check these things by multiplying them out to make sure you didn't make any kind of silly mistake. But following the formula usually just amounts to identifying the correct uh, terms. Okay, so we have our answer there. And then here, this one is the difference of cubes. So the only difference with the difference of cubes formula is it's going to be a cubed minus b cubed. So it'll be like a minus b, and then I think the other one's turned into all pluses, but we'll see. Uh, again, it's just another formula you kind of write down. It's nothing too amazing. Right, those numbers start getting bigger in your head. So when we had the other formulas, we saw that sometimes that could help us with um, doing some mental math. These, not so much. Um, okay, so difference of cubes. So 
So if we have, oh, they're using capital, I was using lowercase. Uh, let's say a cubed minus b cubed. My guess is it's going to be a minus b times a squared plus ab um, plus b squared. That's my guess for this one. Um, let's check and make sure that I guessed correctly. Um, I did. As you can see, the formula here matches. So in this example, we have 27x cubed minus 125. So basically, a this time is going to be like 3x. 3x raised to the third power gives you 27x cubed. And your b this time is going to be like uh, 5, right? 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 again is 125. So that will just make this into 3x minus 5. 3x times 3x would be 9x squared. 3x times 5 would be plus 15x in the middle. And 5 times 5 is 25. So that would be your full factorization for number 23. Oops. Okay. Any questions there? Those two are just kind of plug and chug ones, but the formulas, it's good to know that they exist, but they don't come up as much. Um, yeah. You don't run into them as frequently as the sum or difference of squares. Okay. Then we're just back to factoring again. So more practice factoring, but again, it's good to do a lot of these because they come up and a lot of times it's those combinations of how you put the numbers together that determine how long it takes to factor these problems. So for this one, we have 3x squared plus 36x plus 81. Um, so one thing here, you could start by factoring right away, but your numbers might get big, right? Because with that regular method, we'd have to do, say, 3 times 81, and we'd get 243, and there's a lot of possibilities. But it's always good to see if there's something common to everybody that we can start by taking out. So in this example, everybody is divisible by 3. So we can start by taking out 3. And then inside the parentheses, it'll turn into one of the easy case factoring problems. So um, we can take out the 3. And then we'll just have x squared plus 12x plus 27. And then we can just use the shortcut method. So that's all we need is two numbers that multiply to 27 but they add up to 12, so that's going to be 9 and 3. So uh, we just get 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 9. So we didn't have to go through the whole grouping method. Once we saw that, there was actually just a 3 that we could pull out immediately. Keep hitting shift on accident. Any questions there? Okay, so this one looks like it's going to be some form of a difference of squares. So just to remind you, the difference of squares formula. Um, let me see that that's actually going to be what's happening here. So we're going to get three. Yeah, yeah, it should be. So remember the difference of squares. This is the most common thing that crops up when you're... Um, trying to factor anything that only contains two terms. So if you have an a squared minus b squared, that factors into a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, it's combined, right? Uh, so if we have that 75y to the fourth minus 27y squared. You might not see a difference of squares immediately, but you may notice that at least there's a y squared to take out, and then if you look at both of them, um, they're both divisible by 3. Does anyone know um, what's a good trick to tell if a number is divisible by 3? Right, check in your calculator. Right? No, I'm just kidding. No, there, there's a good mental one. If you add the digits together and that smaller number is divisible by 3, so will the whole thing be. So what do I mean? 75, 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3. Therefore, 75 must be divisible by 3. 
2 plus 7 is 9, and we know 9 is divisible by 3. That trick will work for 3. Um, I think it also works for 9, but it doesn't work for other numbers. So th that's one thing you can... Uh, there's a lot of divisibility tests that often help with uh, deciding if something is uh, divisible. So we can take out our 3y squared, and we get 25y squared minus 9. And the 25y squared minus 9 is where the difference of squares comes in, right? 25y squared is 5y times 5y, and 9 is 3 times 3. So we can apply difference of squares to uh, the second factor there. So we have 3y squared, and then applying the difference of squares, we'll get 5y plus 3 times 5y minus 3. Yes? Uh, because... Both of these are divisible by 3, and they also have a y squared, right? So notice if I would multiply back through 3y squared times 25y squared, 3 times 25 makes 75, and y squared times y squared, you add those exponents, you get y to the fourth, and then if you distribute the 3y squared times the minus 9, you would get the 27, and then you would also have the y squared. happening. <clears throat> okay, this one's a little bit different. 26 factor or state that the polynomial is prime. So a polynomial is prime if you can't break it down into factors. Similarly to prime for a regular number, a uh, regular number is prime if it has no divisors other than one in itself, right? So like 7 is a prime number because it doesn't have anything else that's divisible. But say 12 is not a prime number because you could divide it by 6, let's say. Same thing with polynomials. So we have number 26 here. So factor for state prime. So we have x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 9y squared. Um, what can be done here? Okay, this one's a little bit tricky. I see something that can be done. Um, this one's a little bit hard to recognize maybe, but if you look at these three terms and we group slightly differently, you can group those terms and recognize that those can be factored, right? Because x squared minus 2x plus 1. Remember, if we thought of that as just a polynomial, that's all we'd have to do to factor it is find two numbers that multiply to positive 1 but add that make negative 2. So negative 1 times negative 1 would be an ideal choice there, right? Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, but when you add negative 1 with negative 1, you get negative 2. So that means this actually factors into x minus 1 times x minus 1 minus 9y squared, which in fact is x minus 1 quantity squared minus 9y squared. Why was that good to do? Well, the resulting thing that is left over, doesn't that look like a difference of squares? x minus 1 is being squared, and 9y squared is really 3y times 3y. So now we can use the difference of squares formula on that. So it's two steps. It's a little bit tricky, but sometimes there's no substitute for being clever. So we have x minus 1 plus 3y, and x minus 1 minus 3y. And that would be a factorization of that polynomial. So that one's, that one's pretty tricky. Alright. 
Okay, factor and simplify the algebraic expression. Um, so we've got some exponential notation here. So for this one, we can at least take out the um, x minus 1 to the 1 fourth. <coughs> or x, uh, x plus 2 to the 1 fourth. Sometimes, I mean, it's, you know, you, you just kind of play around with what can be factored out, and things tend to work out, because th th there's kind of sometimes many options. Um, again, the principle in general is to take out whatever you can that's common to both. So usually that's going to be the smaller power of the thing that looks alike, which in this case is the x plus 2 feature. So we have this x plus 2 to the one fourth minus x plus two to the five over four. So let's say I wanted to take out x plus two to the one fourth from both quantities. Well, that matches the thing that's above the first term exactly. So when you pull that out, that's all that would be left over is a one. Does that make sense? And then what would be left over in the second term? Remember, when you're pulling these things out, when you multiply two quantities that have the same base, you're adding their exponents. So when you're pulling out 1 fourth, we're really subtracting 1 fourth from the power on the second term, right? So instead of being 5 over 4, 5 over 4 minus 1 fourth is really going to be 4 over 4, which is the first power, right? So this is going to be x plus 2 to the first power. Or I could write 4 over 4 if you want, but we know 4 over 4 is just the first power. And raising something to the first power doesn't do anything. So really this is x plus 2 to the 1 fourth. And then we have 1 minus x plus 2 in parentheses. So we can really simplify what's in that second set of parentheses by distributing the negative sign. And when you distribute the negative sign, you're going to have a minus x and a minus 2. And we can combine the 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 1. So we can really write this down as x plus 2 to the 1 fourth times minus x minus 1. And that would be the, I think, simplified and factored form here. Keep hitting the wrong button. Okay, so although your answer is equal to the correct answer, it's not in the correct form. Type exponential notation with positive exponents. I wonder if it wants me to factor out the negative 1. I could factor out the negative 1 and make this x plus 1. And then put the negative all the way in the front. Maybe it likes that better. Who knows. I don't really get that from the instructions, but they wanted it in that form apparently. All the exponents were already positive. That's the only reason it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, their their instructions don't specifically indicate why that would be incorrect. The way I'd written it previously. Any questions? Yes. Um, well, the 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 point here is, if you're fact, probably the thing that you're getting tripped up on is something like, oh, let's say we had y to the uh, one eighth minus y to the uh, let's say seventeen over eight. So what could I factor out from this? They both have y and they both have some power. I could factor out whatever the power is that's common, which is the lower power. So if I factored out the y to the one eighth, I would have two things in here, right? I would have um, you know, something that would go here, and then a minus, and then something else that would go here, right? Or, or maybe it would even, maybe the stars are confusing, maybe, let's say I put a capital A and a capital B. And what I want to figure out is I want to figure out what those things are. So to figure out what goes there, I know that y to 1 eighth times somebody times this A would have to equal y to the 1 eighth. 
because that's the guy that's up here. And then the other one would have to be this one, right? I would have this y to the 1 8th times b, and that would have to equal y to the 17 over 8. Does that make sense? So what's the only thing that a could possibly be? Well, this already matches. So the only thing that you multiply somebody by that doesn't change it is the number 1. So that would mean that this a, in fact, actually has to be 1. And then the b, well, you could solve for b if you really wanted. And the way you would solve for b is by dividing by y to the 1 8th. And remember, when you divide, what are we doing? We're subtracting the exponents. So this would be 17 over 8 minus 1 over 8, which is y to the 16 over 8. Right? And that's the same thing as y squared. So this b, in fact, would be y squared. So maybe, actually, maybe if you're going back over these, you want to see A and B. Whoops. So in fact, that means this would be y to the 1 8th times 1 minus y squared. And that's what was happening over here. Instead of y, we, we've got this more complicated looking factor, x plus 2. But re we're really just taking out that um, one fourth power there. And again, for all of these, you're also going to have an additional example if you click question help. If you look at view an example, here's one where they have 1 over 6 and 7 over 6. Again, for this example, we know that they would take out x plus 8 to the 1 over 6. See, and they are showing the same steps there. So, again, a lot of that is just practice with rules of exponents. So we've got another one here, so uh, we'll see an additional example as well. So number 27. We have this x plus 9 to the 1 fifth minus x plus 9 to the 6 over 5. And we see that x plus 9, that whole quantity in parentheses, is the common factor to both. And we want to take out the smaller power there, the 1 over 5. So when you take out the x plus 9 to the 1 over 5, we're going to get two things. Again, you could think about this, if you wanted to, as something like y to the 1 fifth minus y to the 6 over 5. And if you would take out y to the 1 fifth, you would really get 1 minus y to the 5 over 5, which is y to the 1 fifth times 1 minus y. So if you're using a variable substitution, if that helps make things more clear to you, that's what's really going on. But instead of y, what we're going to be using in this example is x plus 9. So we have x plus 9 to the 1 fifth. Uh, the first term is going to give a 1, and then we're going to subtract x plus 9 and again, that's going to be the 5 over 5, but that's going to actually translate to uh, the first power. So 1 minus x is going to be minus x, and then, oh, I forgot the 1 fifth power here. And then 1 minus 9 is minus 8. And then we can factor the negative out, and that will leave us with x plus 8, and we can pull the negative all the way to the front of the entire polynomial, which is how it looks like they want us to answer these problems. So we have negative x plus 9 to the 1 fifth times the quantity x plus 8. Yes? Okay, so... If I sneak a step in here, try to make this a little bit smaller. This is really going to be, all right, this x, this part in front is not changing. 
but it's going to be 1 minus x plus 9, right? And then when you distribute this negative, you get 1 minus x, well that's negative x, and then 1 minus goes to the 9. When you do 1 minus 9, you get negative 8. Okay, state the domain of the following rational expression. So, um, a lot of times when we're looking at uh, domain problems that come up, so two common domain themes if you struggled with domain is one, um, must exclude division by zero, and the second one is we must exclude taking the square root of a negative value. On the one hand, division by zero would yield an expression that is undefined. Um, when you get to calculus, you can talk about limits, and you can say they go to positive infinity or minus infinity, but still, they're not things that are allowed in the domain. And when you talk about square roots of negative values, those give rise to complex numbers. And in this class, we're just studying expressions that have real values. We will look at some complex values here and there, but we won't be looking at them in the context of functions of complex numbers. So this um, expression here, 5 over x plus 6, what we want to do is we want to look at the denominator. And um, uh, so this expression is undefined. There's no square root, so we just have to worry about the denominator of the fraction. So precisely when x plus 6 is equal to 0, that's the denominator, and solving for x, that happens when x is equal to negative 6. So in this problem, that just means the number negative 6 must be excluded from the domain of values for x. So you're just paying attention to property number 1 for domain. Um, now, This next one, uh, number 29, we have y plus 1 over y squared minus 1. So when you're looking at these expressions, a lot of times what you want to do is you do want to factor them completely. Um, so the denominator can be factored by difference of squares, right? y squared minus 1 can be factored into y plus 1 times y minus 1. And it appears that the y plus 1 will cancel. It will behave like that, but the graph will still have an open dot there. So we should exclude both values that would make the denominator 0. So if you put negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 would make the first factor 0, and the second factor 1, 1 minus 1 would make the second factor 0. So here, minus 1 and positive 1 should both be excluded. So... Um, y equals negative 1, and this one, y equals 1, cause division by 0. So that's why we exclude those two values. Um, you might be in a rush to say, oh, y plus 1, that cancels. And though it does behave like that, technically there still should be a uh, removable discontinuity at that point on the graph. Okay, similar thing here, we need to factor the uh, denominator, so this is just getting back to our factoring skills. However, um, again, we can use the shortcut trick here, because the bottom, we just need two numbers that 
multiply to 10 but add up to 11. Well, it's very easy. That's just going to be 10 and 1. So this is going to factor into x minus 5 and then x plus 10 times x plus 1. And the values to be excluded are going to be x equals minus 10 for this factor and x equals minus 1 for this factor. So the number that you would plug into x that would make whatever's in parentheses there equal to 0. Okay, so those are the numbers we're excluding. So negative 10 and negative 1. Any questions there? So just one step further than factoring. Okay, this one, it actually wants us to simplify the rational expression, so we don't have to worry about the domain on this problem. We're really just trying to factor it and then cancel any terms that look like they may cancel. So, again, this homework looks like it is just all about factoring. So it's something you want to be very comfortable with um, by the time you're taking your test. So we have 4x minus 8 over x squared minus 4x plus 4. So the top we can factor 4 out, right? And then that would leave us x minus 2. And on the bottom, we can just use that shortcut trick, right? Um, it would be x minus 2 times x minus 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 gives you the 4 on the end, and when you add them together, gives you the negative 4 in the middle. So we are able to cross off one of these x minus 2 factors in order to simplify and get our simplified version of 4 over x minus 2. So that would be the simplified rational expression. Okay, now they ask us what number should we exclude? Well, we would want to exclude 2 from the domain because 2 minus 2 in the denominator would um, cause division by 0. Okay. So this next one, again, we're just um, simplifying a rational expression once again. So we have x squared minus 8x plus 16 so over 5x minus 20. This time the simpler part to factor is the bottom, right? We can take out a 5 from both terms, and we'll just be left with x minus 4. The top, we need two numbers that multiply to 16, but when you add them together, you get negative 8. That's going to come out as negative 4 both times. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Negative 4 plus negative 4 is minus 8. So again, we can cancel one of those terms and just be left with x minus 4 over 5. And no problems there, right? Because in this time there's no variables in the denominator, so the only thing in the denominator is 5. 5 is never 0, so we don't have to worry about excluding any numbers from the domain. Oh, I lied. Why did I lie? Because whenever you're talking about the domain, you never talk about the um, the final simplified form. You always look at the earlier forms, right? And when it was factored earlier, there was an x minus 4 in the denominator, right? Which means 4 should not be in our final domain. Does that make sense? So when you're talking about the domain, you want to be thinking about back here when x equals 4 must be excluded. So x cannot equal 4. So saying x equals 4 must be excluded or x cannot equal 4, that's the same thing. Everyone understand that part? So don't look at the final simplified version. Look at the first factorization before you canceled anybody. Okay, uh, number 33, same sort of deal. Lots of factoring. So we have y squared plus 12y plus 27 over y squared plus 8y minus 9. 
So anybody want to tell me the factorization of the numerator? So your numbers need to multiply to 27, but add up to 12. 3 and 9, perfect. So we have y plus 3, y plus 9. And how about the bottom? They need to multiply to negative 9, but add up to positive 8. So not so many options for multiplying to negative 9. It's either negative 9 and positive 1, negative 1, positive 9, or negative 3 and positive 3. Positive 9, negative 1. Very good. So we get y um, minus 1 and y plus 9. So our y plus 9s are going to cancel, but when they ask us about the domain, we're going to say y cannot be 1 and y cannot be negative 9, right? We're going to be looking at this step, not after we've canceled the y plus 9s. So our simplified version is y plus 3 over y minus 1, but we have to exclude 1 and negative 9. So what do we say? Uh, negative 9 and positive 1. Yep, looks good. All right. So quite a few of these. Very, very repetitious, but different factoring techniques that keep getting utilized. Um, so on 34 here, uh, we have the difference of squares on the bottom that you can see immediately. So we know that bottom is going to go to x plus 3 times x minus 3. So we know immediately our domain can't have positive 3 or negative 3 in it. And the top is actually just going to factor to x plus 3 times x plus 3. 3 times 3 is 9 and 3 plus 3 is 6. So we'll be able to cancel one of these. Was a bad cancellation. So we end up with x plus 3 over x minus 3 is the simplified form. So the numbers to exclude from the domain, as we said, we want to do. Um, so I think you can actually do this in one step if you want to use that plus minus button. Since it's positive 3 and negative 3, let's see if that works. So that, that's a shorthand to stand for both numbers at the same time. So it, it does work. You can kind of get away with doing that if you're too lazy to use those keystrokes. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some actual operations with these things. So let's just recall for multiplying fractions, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so to multiply fractions... Just multiply straight across. Multiply numerators and multiply their denominators. But when it comes to dividing fractions, what you do is you copy, flip, multiply. So you would copy down the first fraction flip over the second fraction, and then change it back to multiplication. Okay, so dividing fractions is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So um, I'm sure that'll come up shortly after. So to divide fractions, I just think copy, flip, multiply. Okay, so let's look at this one. Again, it's going to be helpful to factor first, so we can just cancel a bunch of stuff. So we have x squared minus 7x plus 12 over x squared minus 3x minus 4 times x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 9. Okay, so let's think about how everybody factors. Well, 
top left, x squared minus 7x plus 12. Negative 3 times negative 4 makes positive 12. But when you add them together, you get the negative 7. So that first top left corner will factor as x minus 3 times x minus 4. Below, negative 4 and positive 1 will work. Right? Negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. And negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, the middle term. So we get um, x plus 1 times x minus 4. And then the other fraction, we have two sets of difference of squares. x plus 1 times x minus 1. And x plus 3 times x minus 9. So let's look at all the stuff that cancels. Well, x plus 1 goes away with x plus 1 x minus 4 goes away with x minus 4. Um, oh, I made that minus 9. It should say minus 3. So this x minus 3 goes away with that x minus 3. And that's all we're left with, actually, is x minus 1 over x plus 3. For as complicated as that initially looked. All kinds of cancels, cance cancelization. So we know it's going to look like x minus 1 over x plus 3. And we have to exclude a whole bunch of numbers. We have to exclude everybody that's on the bottom. So uh, plus and minus 3, a negative 1, and a positive 4. So we have our plus and minus 3, our minus 1, and our positive 4. That makes sense. Okay, got about five more left. So here comes the division one. The tricky thing about this is actually going to be in the uh, excluding numbers from the domain. Because actually, Division by zero, there's division by this whole fraction in addition to division here and division here. So technically when we are looking for division by zero, we have to care about any part being zero except from that x squared minus 16. So being zero in the 8x minus 8 would cause division by zero, or the x squared plus 8x plus 16, or the x squared plus 3x minus 4. So there's more places for division by zero here because not only do we have division in each of the fractions, but we're also dividing by the fraction too. So there's kind of like three instances of division here, whereas when you're multiplying fractions, there's only two. But still a lot of factoring to start. So, before I factor, I'm going to do that first step where we talk about division, copy the first fraction, flip it, and then change the division to multiplication. Okay, and then we've got all the factoring in front of us. So top left corner, that's a uh, difference of squares. So that's just going to be x plus 4 times x minus 4. Below that, we can take an 8 out. So we will have an 8 times an x minus a 1. Then the second fraction has two of the easy case things. So... Negative 4, two numbers that multiply to negative 4, but add up to 3. Positive 4 and negative 1. So we get an x plus a 4 times x minus a 1. And then down below, 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 plus 4 is 8. So that's really an x plus a 4 
times an x plus 4. So before we do the simplification, let's take stock of what needs to be excluded. So the 8 times the x minus 1, that means we need to exclude the number 1. Then in the top right corner, we need to exclude a negative 4 and also a 1. And down below, bottom right corner, that's just a negative 4 in both spots. So there's really only two numbers to exclude, but there's three places in the uh, expression that we had to look. Okay, then we have, what can we cancel? So an x plus 4, another x plus 4, and x minus 1. And we are actually just left with x minus 4 over 8. <clears throat> okay, so now we get into adding fractions. So the thing about adding fractions is you can only do it when they have common denominators, right? So if they have the common denominator, we add the numerator. Otherwise, what we have to do is we have to multiply them by some clever form to make them make the denominators look the same before we add them. So uh, number 37 is no problem because we have common denominators already, right? So so common denominator so just add the numerators So 8x plus 6x is 14x, 13 plus 8 is 21, and then we have 2x plus 3, and then we want to go through the same old story where we try to factor and cancel if we can. In this case, the top, you can take out a 7, and you'll see 2x plus 3. So those cancel, and you're actually just left with 7. So the whole expression actually just simplifies to the number 7, but to figure out what number we can't, we need to exclude, we need to figure out what would make 2x plus 3 the denominator equal 0. So that can be solved by subtracting 3 from both sides and then just dividing by 2. So x equals negative 3 over 2 must be excluded. Does that make sense? So if it's not obvious where it's just the opposite of whatever the number you're looking at is, just set it equal to 0 and solve that linear equation. So x cannot equal negative 3 over 2 here. Okay. Now, this next one, 38, is trickier because they do not have common denominators. So we have 3 over x minus 7 plus 2 over x plus 5. So we have two different denominators kind of going on, an x minus 7 and an x plus 5. So when you're trying to add these things together, what you want to do is you want to multiply the fraction by somebody that's equal to 1, but is going to give you the other denominator. So the, x, the 3 over x minus 7 does not have x plus 5 in the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by x plus 5 over x plus 5 because that's equal to 1. So it's not going to change the value of that expression. And then the second term, it doesn't have an x minus 7, so we will multiply that fraction by x minus 7 over x minus 7. Okay, so the next step is kind of predictable. We have the 3 over the x minus 7 times x plus 5 over x plus 5. And then we have the 2 over x plus 5, and we're multiplying that by x minus 7 over x minus 7. See, so now the denominators are going to be equal, or they're going to be common, right? Because we both have an x plus 5 and an x minus 7. So our, our new thing that we're looking at, we're going to be able to combine the fractions, and they're just going to have this one denominator of x minus 7 times x plus 5. Just like in the previous example when we added, they were just over the single denominator, right? Like if you add one-fifth and two-fifths, you get 
1 plus 2, which is 3 over the 5. The denominator doesn't change, you just add the numerators together. So once the numerators match, you can just add those. Once the denominators match, you can just add the numerators. So what are we going to have to add? We're going to have to add 3 times x plus 5 plus the 2 times the x minus 7. And we'll simplify that by multiplying out. Maybe there's a chance something will, you know, simplify and cancel. So we'd have 3x plus 15 plus 2x minus 14 over our common denominator. x minus 7 times x plus 5. I don't think anything is simplifying. We just end up with 5x plus 1. 15 minus 14 is 1 over x minus 7 times x plus 5. So that's the final answer. Uh, you can't have negative 5 or positive 7 in your domain. So those are the numbers to exclude. Minus 5 and 7. So here we would have the uh, 5x plus 1 on top, and the x minus 7 times the x plus 5 on top. Okay, this one is going to be similar. It's a little bit trickier just because we're going to have more factors going on now. So the denominators are going to be a little bit more complicated still again. So we have 3x over x squared plus 4x minus 21 minus 2x over x squared plus x minus 12. So we want to factor to see what each side has and what they're possibly, how far away they are from having a common denominator. So the first term, the bottom, will factor to um, x plus 7 times x minus 3. And the second one we can factor into x plus 4 times x minus 3. So if we look at the denominators, the first fraction <clears throat> has an x plus 7. <clears throat> the second one has an x plus 4, and they both share an x minus 3. So that means the first one needs the x plus 4 and the second one needs the x plus 7. So that's what we're going to multiply. We're going to take the first one and multiply by x plus 4 over x plus 4, and we're going to take the second one and multiply by x plus 7 over x plus 7. Okay. So now the common denominator will have three factors, but... Um, yeah. So x plus 7, x minus 3... We get the x plus 4 involved. And then the second one. We need to get the x plus 7 involved. Okay, so now we have a great big common denominator of an x plus a 7 and x minus a 3 and an x plus 4, all right? Those are all three unique factors that we've included by multiplying. From the numerator of the first fraction, we will have a 3x times the x plus 4. And from the second fraction, we will have the 2x, the minus 2x times the x plus 7. Does it make sense how we got here? So that's all we have to do now is distribute the 3x to remove the parentheses. 3x times x, 3x plus 4, and then distribute the minus 2x and just combine whatever we have on top. So we have 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 4 is plus 12x. Now distribute the minus 2x. So minus 2x times x is minus 2x squared. And minus 2x times 7 is minus 14x. And then again, we're just copying down all those denominators. Nothing is happening in the bottom. It's just getting recopied. And we'll combine what we can on top. 3x squared minus 2x squared is just x squared. 
plus 12x minus 14x is minus 2x. And then the denominator just gets written down again. That's exactly the same. Um, the top can be factored. You can take out an x, but it's not going to cancel with anybody in the bottom, right? x minus 2 is not one of the factors in the bottom, but I will do that just for... Uh, since we factored everything else completely. But probably it will take the step before where the top is still written, x squared minus 2x. Okay. And then notice if you look at the bottom, we can't be negative 7, positive 3, or negative 4. So we know it's got to be b, right? Because negative 7, negative 7 plus 7 would make 0 in the denominator. Whereas if you look at answer A, it has positive 7, which we know is incorrect. So we're selecting B here, and we're making this x times x minus 2. And then on the bottom, x plus 7. Whoops. x minus 3. And x plus 4. Ah. Uh, Okay, last two. Um, these actually aren't, they look tricky, but they're really not so hard. Um, so, number 40. 6 plus 1 over x over 5 minus 1 over x. So before I show you the trick that simplifies this, let's think about the question of what x is not allowed to be. So, what's the clear thing that x cannot be equal to, for domain reasons? Zero, yeah. We see 1 over x is one of the fractions, so 1 divided by 0 is not allowed. So, um, x cannot equal 0, since 1 over 0 is undefined. There's also one other problem, right? If you look at the big division, 5 minus 1 over x is also a denominator, right? So you also have this problem of 5 minus 1 over x. This cannot equal 0, which means 5 could not be the same thing as 1 over x, which means x cannot equal 1 fifth. So that's the other problem. right? Because if you took the reciprocal of 1 over 5, you'd get 5. And then you'd end up with 5 minus 5 in the big denominator. So your two numbers that cannot equal, um, that x cannot be allowed to be are 0 and also 1 fifth. Now, how about simplifying this problem? I think the easiest way to do it is just multiply by x over x. If I multiply by x over x, this is 6 plus 1 over x times x and 5 minus 1 over x times x. Well, then you're just distributing, right? How much is 6 times x? Well, that's 6x. What about x times 1 over x? How much is x over x? 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So we get 6x plus 1 on top, and 5x minus 1 on bottom. I'm all set. I'm curious if they use that same method. Yeah, they do something trickier. <laughs> they do some really complicated thing, but my way is a little sneakier than theirs. Okay, let's go to the last one. This one also not so bad. Not as bad as it looks. Um, looks kind of scary, I'm sure. So 
So we have 6 over x minus 1 minus 7 over x plus 1 divided by 11 over x squared minus 1. If you look at it all at once, it just looks very dastardly, very scary. But the thing to realize is at the end of the day, we're dividing by a fraction, right? And we know how to do one fraction divided by another fraction. You just copy, flip, and multiply. So we can turn this whole thing into that big thing being multiplied by the reciprocal of 11 over x squared minus 1. And that won't look nearly as scary. Because we'll have 6 over x minus 1. Ah, oh, sorry. Minus 7 over x plus 1. And now, instead of being divided by 11 over x squared minus 1, it can be multiplied by x squared minus 1 over 11. And then you can just distribute that fraction, and we're going to get lots of stuff that's going to cancel, right? Because, so this will be 6 over x minus 1 times x squared minus 1 over 11. And then also our minus 7 over x plus 1 is being multiplied by our x squared minus 1 over 11. Okay, and what's the thing about x squared minus 1? Well, that factors by difference of squares into x plus 1 times x minus 1. So we have 6 over x minus 1 times this x plus 1, x minus 1 over 11 minus 7 over x plus 1. times x plus 1 times x minus 1 over 11. So the x plus 1 cancels here, and in this one the x minus 1 cancels. So what is left? 6 times x plus 1 over 11, and then we have minus 7 times x minus 1 over 11. Well, they have a common denominator, and we can do 6x plus 6 minus 7x plus 7, all over 11, distributing a 6 over the x plus 1 and the minus 7 over the x minus 1, and then we will be left with minus x plus 13 over 11. So, that is the final... Um, simplified form of the rational expression. We just have to look back at the very beginning, what's not allowed at the bottom, both positive 1 and negative 1. At the very expression, you can't be dividing by plus or minus 1. So plus or minus 1 should be the only thing that needs to be excluded, so negative 1 and positive 1. So I know some of them look quite scary, but like I said, really, it's it's an achievement in this class once you've made it through the first two modules, because by far they're the hardest. They have so much review material on them, it seems overwhelming at first, but we'll start to get into functions, and, and things will actually slow down a bit after here. So, pause this recording.